Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to Chris Anderson Comics. I am here with my friend Ro Higashi, uh, author and illustrator of Half of the Crown from, out now from uh, Cosmic Line Productions. How you doing, Ro? I'm doing okay. Good. Um, so uh, this is your uh, comic book gene pool episode where I like love to have cartoonists come on and talk about like things that either got them into wanting to make comics or just excite them right now or you know inspire them in some way. And you picked Dan to Dan yes. uh, for for this, which is like it's a it's a modern book, uh, and I don't get to see too many like pretty current books uh when we when we do these episodes so it's exciting to look at look at like some fresh things what made yeah, you the anime is coming out soon and i think yeah. you can pre-screen the first three episodes uh this weekend only oh, really? um and i did buy tickets for that and what was exciting is usually you know because i live in a small town um mm -hmm. if you you know see uh any anime movies or anything like maybe half of the theater if you're lucky will be full but for this one, when I went to buy the tickets uh, two weeks ago, um, there was hardly any seats left. So that got me really excited. That's awesome. I actually went and saw, I, 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 I don't think I've ever gone and seen any anime in the theater besides like maybe a Miyazaki movie. Yeah, I usually don't. Um, yeah. Sometimes we will, like, you know, on occasion if the girls really want to. But I think I did see the last, the latest like Miyazaki one. I think the Stork and the Boy. I forgot what the English name is, but um, <laughs> yeah. that one was trippy. But yeah, normally we usually don't go and see it. And one of the biggest reasons why I don't is because for some reason, every time they show Japanese movies, um, and I don't know if it's the theater or if it's just like the file that they're given for the movie, the sound is always really crappy. And really? so. Yeah, in the movie theaters usually. So I, I I tend to prefer watching it at home where the sound is a little bit better. Wow. So last night actually I went and saw Cowboy Bebop, uh, the movie at uh, at the theater with a friend of mine, and it was packed. Was it um, good? It was. was it, oh my God, it was so good. It was so good. Like just everything about it was great. All these like strange compositional. Uh, like uh, choices that I just, I loved it, e like everything. And then the action was just amazing. And the sound design, I was I was actually like thinking about the sound while I was there, like it was actually really good. The only problem I had was that um, it, wa it wasn't it was dubbed, so. Uh, oh, the reading part. No, the reading is fine, except for the, it's on the bottom of the screen. And so I've got like six heads, you know, in front of me. Oh, going no. like this, And I'm going like this to like to see what the hell anybody's saying. The yeah. Time. So yeah, that part's probably tough. that was kind of a bummer, but it was it was nice to see that like so many people turned out to see it, you know. Um, this so this is a trip. This is the this is the kind of manga that I, I really gravitate towards. Oh, I'm um, so glad. I was hoping you would love it. So, yeah. Um, let's, let's take a look. First of all, you can tell right away. Yeah. So <laughs> Why did Ro pick this book? Hmm. <laughs> no, no, they're minor. <laughs> I picked it for friendship. It's, it's hard because the, it's hard to sell this book or this series, I should say to other people be, because it does start out like the first chapter is so skeevy seeming. Yeah. And so, but the rest of the series is not skeevy. Um, it's very okay. wholesome, very all about, you know, friendship and, and, you know, power of love and that kind of thing. Um, right, right, right. But yeah. That first chapter was just like, Ugh. <laughs> really? is this appropriate? I don't well, know. Now I might need to go back and get the, uh, the first chapters. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you do. And you'll see what I mean. Like it's, it's very uncomfortable. I, I don't know if I'm just old now, but I've gotten to the age that like, you know, if I know that the characters are that age, I it's I get uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Them being yeah. put in certain situations, but thankfully, you know, nothing nothing weird ended up happening. It was just kind of a it might, but it didn't. <laughs> so, um, uh, I should probably like fill people in on what is has happened in the series before we kind of get into this. Like we won't get to like too deep into the story, but basically, you've got these two kids who are like really into paranormal stuff, 
Yeah. Help me out if I'm if I'm. Yeah. If so I'm they're wrong. kind of both polar opposites in their beliefs. So um, Momo grew up in, I think, is she the one that believes? I forget which one. One of them believes like in aliens, and the other one believes in ghosts. I, and, think, it's, I think it's she believes in ghosts and he believes yeah. in aliens because yeah, and yeah. they both originally like uh, yeah, from the beginning they both originally were like you're stupid for believing in that. Like right. my belief is is better, and then they kind of bond over that but they're kind of polar opposites in terms of like how they look how they act right and um just the kind of things that they want in life but then they realize you know through their <laughs> shared you know belief of paranormal stuff that they are kind of similar <laughs> yeah because so. she ends up getting taken by these aliens because they want to breed with humans yes right? yeah so that is the skeevy stuff you were talking about yeah yeah. And then he finds this like lucky cat thing, right? That is cursed with this ghost of this tur or turbo granny, right? Yeah. Or something like a witch. Yeah. And it imbibe it gives him these powers, right? Yeah. Of, of and it makes him really, really depressed too. So Oh, it does. Okay. Yeah. So he ends up looking. I just I love his design when he's possessed by Turbo Granny because he just he looks amazing. I, I think like I just fell in love with the design like the first time I saw it. But every time he changes into her, he's like, man, this sucks, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's like, yeah. Oh, what a drag, you know? And I and I think that's what they make him say in the English translations. But yeah, in Japanese, it's just more of like, wow, my life sucks sort of thing. Right. So I, I wonder if this is where something is killing the children gets the gets its uh, face covering with the teeth from because it looks almost exactly like that and this is definitely before that yeah uh, interesting i just noticed that and then this is uh this is momo's grandma uh-huh okay <laughs> yeah, yeah she's she's the hot grandma yeah she definitely grandma. does not look like a grandma so she kind of helps from the sides yeah she's the only character that they dress up extremely skimpy all the time and i feel like that's because she's the only one they kind of can you but get she's a grandma that. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. And then you've got uh, um, Aria here, and she Ida, is, Ida. Oh, I, I, okay, and she yeah. is the uh, um, she's just like a girl that they go to the school with, but also yeah, she's kind of like that mean girl type at first, mm -hmm. um, and where she like wants the attention, and but then once she starts to kind of join the team because she also gets you know eventually possessed by something. Um, you start to like her a lot. I started out hating her really bad, but now she's admittedly one of my favorite characters. Sometimes that's oh. how it works, you know? Yeah. Um, and then this is their friend who, uh, underneath his house, as, when, as this chapter gets started, mm -hmm. uh, there's like a cult that has been sacrificing people to this giant worm. Yes. Right? And somehow there is this demon, uh, evil eye, yeah, demon down there that uh, has possessed him. Yeah, uh, and then when he gets possessed, um, the evil eye personality is is definitely <laughs> definitely wants to kill everything. But yeah. he's also very, he's kind of a meathead. So okay. if you are able to, I guess, show him that you are a worthy opponent, like you can almost kind of manipulate him in a way, just being like, hey, if you do this for us, then we'll, you know, we'll fight later. And he's like, okay, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, so we open up and like, here's the, this is the worm here. Yeah. Uh, and they- and That's the underground house. Like below the house is like endless, I guess, array of houses kind of, you know, uh, it almost seems like, their interdimensional spaces just kind yeah, of yeah exactly with that's each other, that's what it described really it as cool. right yeah so they knock him down there and here's this evil eye character and we we had to kind of look it up to see like it looks like it's drawn traditionally but we weren't entirely sure and it turns out it is drawn traditionally yep um and the the tone work on this is just out of control i'm guessing that they do the tones digitally at this point uh, probably all of everybody at this point does. I don't know though. Hey, but some of the textures though, I wonder about it, huh? Like the ones on the wood under, you know, under his feet. I, oh, that's that, for sure. Right. Nib. Yeah. That's for sure. A nib. 
but this yeah. stuff is this stuff is like a digital uh, yeah like, that one would probably have to be like and that this yeah stuff here, yeah but that that's the wood and, and everything the arms like everything here that's all it's amazing uh, yeah yeah nib work that's wild um wait a second that's the wrong page that's not the page you were talking about is it before no it's it's later so that, is it but that's such a cool page it is we can stare at that page all day that's fine i'm yeah I'm cool yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> so the, we we jump right into this fight uh where he's kind of going at the two of them or at at is just her? Um, I think right now it's her, and then later on, I think um, the other one will show up. So okay, and then she's yeah. got the cat that has the 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 granny ghost in it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, look at that! Just look at that! Um, the the bending of the um, perspective. Yeah, and pushing all the line work towards the center of you know force. Yeah, and then I love this like circle around i know. love the circle yeah and i love how the circle is is kind of in perspective from where we are at like standing there so i i i just i love how messy but amazing it all looks especially the um pen scratches like behind the evil eye character yeah like if you look at it it looks so simple but you can tell that they've probably done those strokes thousands probably you know, millions of times over and over that each one has a purpose. So it still works, even though it's really sloppy. And you don't really see a lot of that, especially in the older, like, manga books. I feel like that's, like, a newer thing that's happening where, like, mangaka are kind of getting a little bit more brave about, you know, putting a purpose to things looking more gritty. Um yeah. And of course, you know, I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of people in the comments being like, well, actually, there's this comic that did this and that. But I think because I grew up more with like the super clean cut comics, like it kind of gave me this false um, understanding that in order to be accepted, I needed to make everything way too clean. And especially if you work digitally, you can kind of get really obsessive with like how clean you can get. Yeah. Um, but done the done. What I appreciate about that is that after discovering it, I realized I needed to loosen up a little bit more. So it was very much, you know, a, I guess, spiritual, like kind of transitioning experience for me, kind of trying to absorb all these kinds of scenes. And I just, there's a lot of scenes where Momo gets kind of pushed back like that and her legs are kind of like flying back and, you know, she's in a blocking position and she kind of hits something. Yeah. Um, and it never gets old for me. Every time yeah. I'm like, whoa, like I just I wanted to study how, you know, her body flew in the air and, you know, just kind of like the impacts that um, she takes on each time. So, yeah, that's her move huh? is like to do, do this like cr arm cross block. Yeah. Um, I, I, I completely get what you're saying with like that moment where you realize that you can be looser with your stuff. I mean. Growing up, I was very much, I pretty much used nothing but microns to draw my stuff, you know, and everything was very detail oriented and very small. I would, I would, I would almost always just use like a, a 005 micron to draw everything, just really tiny and stiff. Um, and it wasn't until I went to, to college for the, the first year that, uh, you know, the teacher was like, you know, you need to figure out how to get away from this and loosen up and use your whole arm. And I was like, yeah, it's uh, no, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know? yeah. I feel um, like I'm learning that exact thing, you know, where you, you, you use, um, yeah, your shoulder, your shoulder and uh -huh. stuff. And, um, you keep your forearm straight. Uh, yeah. I feel like I'm learning that 2024. Yeah. 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 yeah it'll save your wrist. That's for sure. <laughs> it's, think, it's definitely helped. For oh yeah. I, yeah, for sure. Um, I think it wasn't until I discovered like um, like Sean Murphy and and Paul Pope's uh, wiggly brushy work that I really started to like accept that I could do it and and just let go and not worry about the the per perfect perspective details or whether the the line is perfectly straight or not. In fact, I basically unless I'm doing uh, um, like the panel borders, I'm not using a ruler almost ever anymore. 
you know, yeah. I'm just trusting myself. And I feel like they're trusting themselves to to do this bend and to do these lines. Yeah. Because they're not straight at all. But they do exactly. have they're they're more um like emotional lines than yeah they are I think anything. too what this artist does an excellent job of is that they trust their reader. They know that the reader is gonna like be able to interpret it well. Um and that's something that I definitely as you know, later on when we look at half of the ground, um, you'll see that I, I definitely needed more work on that. And because um, I, I always, as an artist, get worried that people won't be able to interpret whatever I'm trying to say mm -hmm. correctly. And so I try to make it as clear as possible, but to the point where, you know, I take too long doing it. And then at the same time, like it, you know, I, I should focus more on having it be fun for me because then the reader will realize that, you know, they'll, they'll feel that, I guess. Authenticity is important. Totally. <laughs> and I and think if I'm yourself. nervous creating something, yeah. I think that will like bleed out of the page. So. Yeah. It's funny. This conversation is keeps going on because we keep hitting these points for each other. But I think that um, like uh, when I'm really having a hard time is usually when I'm looking at another artist and, and trying to, and going, wow, I should incorporate that into my work. Or, you know, I wish I could draw more like that and really focusing on somebody else. And then all of a sudden I'll get this block and I won't be able to do anything. And it's until I like tell myself, don't draw like anybody else, draw like you, just go, just trust yourself. That's when the block breaks. Can I tell you something yeah. that totally blew my mind uh, last week? So um, last week I, I have, um, a friend, uh, she's uh, much older, but she is like a chaplain at a local um, hospital. Mm -hmm. And so she sees all kinds of shit, you know, like she sees people die left and right. And so she said, you know, what she's learned is that life is not guaranteed in every moment. So, you know, on the way home or, you know, on the way wh wherever you could die, the next day you could die. So if knowing that, like if you're worried about it turning out bad, would you still do the right thing or the thing that you needed to do, even if you knew that it was going to turn out bad? Mm -hmm. And I sat there and I thought, yeah, I guess that's yes, because that's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And she's like, then go ahead and, you know, let the bad thing happen and just do it. And that made me <laughs> kind of realize that, you know, all the anxiety that I have about just even starting a task, um, I felt silly about it. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, um, I've been trying to use that as like a personal ma mantra, like almost on a daily basis since then. Yeah, totally. I mean, that makes makes absolute sense. Um, the the pacing on this is amazing, too. So from where he he kicks her into the, you know, the pole and you see you see her hit, you see it break. You see a, that same almost that same moment. And then, boom, he has her pinned with his leg. Like, yeah right over no like you know it's it's the moment like the debris still hasn't even fallen from <laughs> from this yet i just love that pacing and this like low uh this yeah the speed I'm, I'm so impressed at you know how well they're able to portray speed yeah timing is just totally different in um in a lot of not all but in a lot of manga as opposed to like American or European comics, you know? Yeah. And there's a huge, there's, it's, you know, it's all comics, you know, it's all the same language, but it's, it's like the difference between it's, it's like film. It's like the difference between a French film and a Japanese film and an American film, you know, the, the culture breeds a different way of handling the storytelling, you know? Yeah. And this is just as fast and, and kinetic and exciting as it is it's also really slow, you know? Yeah. Like there's this much story <laughs> yeah. and in an American comic, it would have been, you know, 22 pages of the yeah. same, almost the same story, you know? Yeah, or there would like, be a, kind of a more um, implied forms of movement where this one is a little bit more like, no, we're going to be meticulous about it and show mm -hmm. you every little thing that happens. Right, but for, for me as a person who really loves like, martial arts choreography especially in terms of like storytelling like mm -hmm. i'm kind of uh, obsessed with it um yeah. i 
I, I appreciate it. It's definitely, you know, all those little pieces of wood flying everywhere. Yeah. Like there's, there's just this bit in my heart that I'm like, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it, you can tell this guy was like dreaming about it before he like got on his desk and was just like, yeah, I'm going to make all these bits of wood like flying everywhere. So um, the interesting thing that I, I want to mention too, before uh, I forget it is that um, the, Mangaka for My Hero Academia had admitted that um, American audiences are harder to please mm -hmm. than Japanese audiences, which I I think like a lot of American audiences would like look at manga and think that they're all like super perfectionist and they are, you know, and what's culturally appropriate for, you know, what they consider perfectionist or not. Um, but also, I think Japanese audiences are just easier to just enjoy something if they want to. Mm -hmm. But he said that he was always very nervous, or a lot, most mangaka are nervous, like, when it starts going overseas. Really? Because, yeah, he says Americans will not be shy about complaining about this oh. or that. And then I think he's right, because I did see people complain about, like, a Chainsaw Man, like, manga page. And as a creator, I was looking at it thinking, I can tell where the characters are and what's happening. Like, this is fine. Yeah. But you just had people ripping the page apart, like left and right. But to me, it was it was perfectly OK. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was little things like the characters line uh, weight was different, like drastically different from the background. And but those are things that, you know, as a comic artist, like you make those choices, like in the time and what's appropriate. And as, as long as the storytelling is like flows very well, I'm pretty easy to please. Um, yeah. But I, I think that Americans have, because of stuff like this that we're looking <laughs> at now, they kind of have this misconception that everything ha kind of has to be perfect but then like as we discussed earlier there's not really a lot of perfect things on this page so yeah and the other thing is i think that well americans just love to um get on their soapbox even that if they don't know what they're talking about <laughs> and yeah i would love to see the people that <laughs> are annoying like about that yeah that go uh, take take their place and try to do it. You know what I mean? Like if you think you can do it better then do it better. And if you can't shut up, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I will definitely, I'll, I'll call out something that I think is weird, but I also at the same time know that sometimes it's just about, you got to hit a deadline. And even though you know that it's not right, you got to move on, you know, and get it next time. Yeah, there was a lot of panels in Half of the Crown that I just probably we were reworked at least three or four times and realized, okay, at this point, if I do it again, I'm just going to be wasting time at this point. So, yeah, and I just left it. And then it just kind of, you know, I'll look back at it and be like, Ugh, but then at my other practical brain would like tell me it is what it is. Just leave it. So, yeah, exactly. I love these, uh, these sort of like uh, hatched, uh, the hatch line work to show movement. The first time yeah. I saw that was in like Lampo, the hypersonic boy. Yeah. Um, just executed masterfully. Um, right. And then, so in terms of the perfection that I was talking about uh, earlier, is that usually those lines would be so straight, but if you do it like that, it kind of loses its organic feel. Yeah, exactly. And so I really like that I saw something like this seeing that the hatches were like all kind of not in the parallel direction, but just kind of at least as long as they were next to each other, it still portrayed the right direction that it was flowing. So exactly. I mean, and you can see in like American comics, how um, other artists have picked up on this, like, you know, the biggest, probably the biggest working artist right now is Daniel Warren Johnson and he obviously has looked at stuff just like that and uses it all the time you know yeah he didn't invent any of it he just you know he's we've and we've all borrowed you know from each other down the line we just look at stuff that we love and pick up on it and use it you know to our advantage yeah this is great yeah, yeah. the cube uh, yeah or the house I should say 
Yeah, and there's this wild screen tone over the top of it. You can see it's almost this like uh, like animal pattern to show the energy. That's amazing. And then like the white of it that is cut in. I wonder how they did that. If they did it on the actual paper or if they did it afterwards because it is cut into like the the screen tone as well. Yeah, I am kind of obsessed with trying to figure out how to do exactly that. Yeah. Um, I bet it's, it's afterwards. I bet you anything that it's yeah, a probably, digital brush after over the top after, of traditional. And then they, I think to have it stand out, they probably put, I don't know if you can see it there and let me know, there's probably like a slight shadow placed under the edges of it. To make yes, it there is. A little bit more. Yeah, yeah. good call. Yep, totally. There totally is. So yeah, this was probably added like in Photoshop afterwards. Yeah. Crazy. Such good pages. So so what's happening here is he's he's fighting this worm with a soccer ball. Yes. Um well, or, it, or this like energy ball or whatever. Yeah, it is. I, I don't know if it starts out as a soccer ball, but yeah, it's it's uh, that's one of his moves is he has a ball that he can kind of kick around he you don't really see him use using punches a lot this character yeah. a lot of it is with the legs and <laughs> or his ass <laughs> yeah the the creator it's funny because like there are a lot of the characters have panty shots and stuff but mm -hmm. this character arguably has the most panty shots. <laughs> hey equal opportunity you know <laughs> but I, I do like that the panty shots are not meant to be purely objectifying it's just like right. oh if the character is flowing this way you're gonna see you're right gonna see. exactly it's whatever you know yeah but this way that he kicks the ball here and like this like unnatural leg swing yeah uh, and the and the stretching of the of the ball with the speed lines that is yeah. just brilliant and then right here where it kind of ricochets off of something and then off and then through the panel off the house and then <clears throat> it goes uh, like bounces off the house, off the panel. So, you know, something else is happening here. And then it comes back yeah, and goes through them here. The way that it's just like the trajectory yeah, the way that of it. The storytelling, it's, it. I, like you said, right off of the panel. I, I just can't, I, I don't we, know. I want to like live in the mind of this guy for about an hour or 24 hours. And I feel like that I would come out really enlightened. <laughs> yeah. It's so fun. And the architecture too. I know um, a lot of uh, mangaka take photos and then manipulate them to get, to get the, this, you know, yes. this perfect look. And it almost looks like they do. I would love to see the original pages to see how they do that. If they, if they've, if like an assistant has popped this in digitally, or if it's actually drawn onto the page. So I don't know how they do it. For this comic specifically, mm -hmm. I, I didn't actually look it up, but I did see um, a video of some other mangaka kind of doing this trick. They'll take the photo and then they'll kind of posterize it and mm -hmm. then um, make the, you know, bring up the contrast. And then whatever looks too much like a photo, they'll kind of go in and kind of edit over it. Okay. And, and to make it look like it fits more with the environment. So they'll keep everything the way that it is. But if there's a part of the photo that it's like, oh yeah, that looks like a photo, they'll take those tones out and then they'll put in pen tones in place of that. So it's, it's probably half and half, like half of that is the photo and then the other half is like the pen tones that they added to it. Yeah, it's really, it's really wild because right up to the edge of it is all this nib work. For sure, and then yeah. the bla even the ball blasting out looks like it's it's drawn. Yeah. So how they place that, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you could figure it out. You could. I mean, I could figure it out. There's a lot of layers, but, right? Maybe, or maybe they just, or maybe they just like posterized it, printed it out, light boxed it. I doubt it. With the that, that would that seems like it would take too long. I, I think the video that I watched, they would print out some of it and then they would like white out and pen I over the, the printout that they did. I oh, so. and just draw over the top of it so they white out this 
this stuff here. Yeah. Interesting. I guess that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Gosh. There's this thing that I uh, tell my friends, uh, David and Rick, <laughs> David Grom and, and Rick Lopez, like mm -hmm. whenever I find art that's too good, yeah, I'm always like, we got to take them out. That's yeah, so <laughs> guys, guys got to die. It's, <laughs> it's yeah, over. Yep, <laughs> take out the competition. You know, <laughs> well, it's not even that. I just feel like, oh no, they're too enlightened at this point. Exactly. Like, if they rise any higher, they'd be a demon. So it's you know up to us. <laughs> to take them out so that's usually my my highest form of a compliment i can give to an artist it's like i don't know what to tell you man but we got to take you out so yep <laughs> oh man this worm is just crazy super phallic <laughs> <laughs> i didn't realize that until you said it. that's hilarious yes it is <laughs> um uh, I've got a worm kind of like this in Three Headed Pig Man that just gets like made up, but it's all made out of all heads that are swallowing each other. Oh, and I, wow. I, I love the, and, and when I do gums on like weird creatures, I do it exactly like that, where it's like kind of the ridges. And layers. Yeah, just because wow. it's like unsettling. Yeah. I love that. That's so cool. And I love just the, the, the contour nib work around the worm too. I, I love the monsters and creatures that this artist does because you can tell these are creatures or like, you know, that have been in his head since childhood. And then he yeah. became an adult and was like, I'm going to make it look as badass as possible. Yeah. yeah. Oh, listen, I draw from the, my all the like draw out from all of this weird stuff that I drew as a kid all the time. Yeah, you're you're definitely one of those people. I and you know you can ask uh, <laughs> David and Rick, but I've I've probably said more than a handful of times we need to take Chris out. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are terrible assassins because I just know where I'm at. I'm here. I've been here the whole time. <laughs> we'll kill you with kindness. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's a deal. Um, this ball too, you can see is, is made out of like spirits or something. There's these like skull faces screaming in it, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, here again, like, look at that jump. Yeah, that, like that look movement. at that butt, look at that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> speed butt. <laughs> and here's the one that you were talking about, where, okay, he's coming to finally take her out, but then, uh, um, oh gosh, what's his name? Ken? Is that his, na his name? Okaru is what they usually call him. Okaru. Oh, okay. Yeah. They, they dumbed it down for Americans like me. <laughs> and Sorry, so the Japanese R, like la di du de do, is pronounced where we pronounce our Ds. Like, so oh. right behind your teeth at the roof of your mouth. Right. Right? And, but instead of a D sound, it's a rolling L. So la di du de do. That la, is, du, la di du de do? Yeah, yeah. So okay. instead of o, okarun, it's okarun. So. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Okarun. Yeah, perfect. All right, I'm on my way. <laughs> you I just did it first to, try. Usually I just need to go live the like immerse myself in the in the country for a couple years. I think <laughs> that's what I had to do. <laughs> I don't think I would have learned it otherwise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, this is so. This is the shot that you were talking about. I think that you sent me. You were like, check this out. I want to talk about this. This is one of them. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, uh, love this whole, like, he's breaking all the panels here. The, yeah. The, the, both of them are. And then when they hit, you know, it's just this ball of light. But what a great pose. Like, just the back of the arm, even. Yeah. You know, the figure work is just amazing. And it's not, um, like, it's it's not perfectly anatomically correct. It's It's stretched and weird. But it's also yeah. showing a like a at the same time like a very uh, you can tell they're very knowledgeable about anatomy and the way yeah. like, all the muscles because all these muscles are real and that is how they connect. But yeah. then he goes and stretches it and makes it wonky. Yeah, uh, I like that when the characters kind of are in this spot. And that was another thing too. Um, so this is. Gonna sound like it's unrelated at first, but I promise it's related. Uh, 
uh, Nintendo developers when they were working on like Splatoon. And a lot of people would ask him like, oh, well, how did you, you know, come up with the concepts and everything? And so they recommended like, when you're developing something or you're doing anything, don't ask for outside input. And the reason for that is, is because a lot of people will have opinions on how you should do things, but it's smarter to just follow your gut on what you think is going to look great. And I remember that I used to try to exaggerate, and maybe I wasn't good enough, I'm pretty sure I just wasn't good enough at the time. I think back in like 2014 or 15, um, a lot of these kind of poses where people um, are just kind of like looming over or, you know, just elongating the limbs and stuff. And I think I put it in Corey Lewis's uh, forum on Facebook back then, uh, back when Facebook didn't have as much users as it does now. And um, it got ripped apart because people are like, anatomy's not like that. The body doesn't bend that way. Like, what the fuck are you drawing like that for? Like, you're just being like, because uh, a, a lot of them at that time were really anti-manga style, which is uh -oh. interesting because Corey has like, you know, huge influence for manga. But he yeah. also, in, I think, included like, you know, his own spin on it to where it was kind of acceptable with the ginger box like standard back then. And um, I remember just kind of being confused, you know, wait, am I not allowed to do this? Like, am I not allowed to just kind of bend reality to it? I thought this is the whole point of like all comics and everything. And, you know, like I said, I probably just didn't do it correctly, but I feel like that if we took this and put it there, you would have a lot of people that would say the same thing, be like, Mongo's so stupid, like, look how you know, the body's bending, like nobody like bends that way or the torso is like disconnected, like this is so stupid. But <laughs> for art heads like me, I'm just like, no, it's, they, they're they owning the stupid. They get yeah. that it's stupid and they're trying to just make it cool. Like they're just trying to have a good time. And exactly, I think y'all are thinking too hard about it. <laughs> I think that a, another huge problem is, is, especially in the time period that you were talking like 2014 is mm -hmm. when everything in you know american comic shops was moving towards trying to make the comics look like the movies oh. and trying to set everything in this reality like which, a more cinematic thing yeah which you know that you can throw that in the garbage as far as i'm concerned I, if i want to see a movie i'll go see a movie i want to talk about i want to read comics i want to escape into comics and i want it i i for me personally i love this sort of balance between cartoony and reality where you can you you can squash and stretch things you know and, and make things a little weird and different because aesthetically it looks cooler you know it's like todd mcfarlane always talking about how he draw more chains because it just kids love chains or whatever well you know i don't know if kids love chains <laughs> but you know they it does look cool when it's flowing and stuff like that and there's also another thing that, to, that people always forget it's like that a lot of this stuff you know, like was you know originally made for kids right mm -hmm. and that that mentality is totally different than an adult because kids don't care kids want to see cool stuff and they want to see action and stretching something implies more speed or action or movement and they don't they're not looking at it like that and it's yeah. when you get these adults that are looking at it through this like i of of you know as soon as you have to start paying your own bills you get pretty pretty <laughs> grumpy and then you start yeah. looking at things in a different way you know and i think that that's where a lot of that stuff comes from too and it, it bugs the shit out of me to same, no end same hard same when you know it's boring to me to just have things like super photo referenced and unless there's some, some sort of style behind it you know like a yeah or something like yeah anyway like yeah there's I got set off there, but <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I didn't mean to trigger you, but no, it, it's, it's, it's all good. Yeah. It needs to be said. Um, yeah, it does. <laughs> but yeah, no, like I, it's, it's amazing. Like it's look at that. Don't no background. Why? Because we don't need it. We know where we are. <laughs> because fuck and, you. That's why. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And it like, it's about the action. We'll be reminded where we are later when we can use the background to show more force. Yeah. See, 
man, so good. Yeah, yeah, this is incredible. And then um, I love as it sort of goes on. Here's him turning back. Or no, he's he's normal here, and now he's going to turn back into it. And yeah, taking over. Yeah, that's so cool. I also really love. It used to bug the crap out of me when I was first getting into manga. I think mm -hmm. it, there's this. I think there's this. Um, there's this like period of adjustment when you are, aren't exposed to it in your culture. Yeah, where you get these things like this. <laughs> right and yes. kind of and, and and just having come from american comics when all of a sudden it turns very like cartoon like that yeah it, it's it's jarring but it's actually really brilliant because it's just another form of getting the point across really fast yes you know it's, well also also to um <laughs> sorry somebody asked me um why anime and manga eyes are are a lot bigger mm -hmm. and you know you'll hear bullshit things of like oh they're trying to be westernized and it's like westernized standards of beauty it's it's that's not i mean if we look at other you know styles the eyes are probably equally as big right mm -hmm. um yeah but a, a lot of emphasis in specifically in japanese culture and expression are actually done from you know the eyes and up yep so um you can if someone like has a mask, you're actually not miss missing out a lot on the facial expressions that they have here. So usually from here down, um, the face will pre pretty much stay static. So for that reason, when you find that somebody's whole face changes, mm -hmm. that's so rare, right? You know, in the culture to do publicly, that when it happens, people like, think it's whoa. hilarious. Yeah. yeah, and then so I think that's why they have those dumb faces. Um, and I I have. A, a friend who actually visited um because he's on a business trip right now and he stopped by and he him and his wife and kids had lived here for about two years and there's this one story that he said that i think will illustrate exactly what i just said where he was like yeah you know um our car started like making weird sounds because they were on, on a road trip and we got out of the car and we saw like we had a flat tire and he's like and my wife you know being here for two years just you know, without hesitation, you went, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. which normally you wouldn't do that. You would just like stay calm and you wouldn't, you would keep that reaction in. So when you have those moments in the culture where you kind of show and use your whole space for the expression, it's so rare that most people just freak out and laugh about it. And so I, when he told that whole story, you know, without that cultural context of it, you know, it, we, all four of us, you know, my husband and and him and his wife wouldn't have laughed about it. So. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, it's 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 also like just also so like instantly readable that you know whatever's going on you know in, in the scene too. Yeah, just real you know quick, and I, I I love that about it. It's just another tool for storytelling. Yeah. Yeah, this is these pages are awesome. Look at that fire. The way that they, you know, handle the the smoke and everything. And it's still a nib, which is crazy. Yeah. That's a lot of marks. I think I would have used a brush for that. A really good <laughs> brush. Yeah, I mean it's hard to know like how much of that was also like if he, maybe he did it all black first and then he kind of scratched it out digitally. I don't know. We'll I don't think so. It. I don't think so. Doesn't you think look it's like all it. a traditional. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some, there's obviously some like, uh, like gray fuzz stuff back here and like mm -hmm. some, some white out over the top of that, but that's all, that's all a nib. Damn. Yeah. Yep. But then, you know, they took all the time to do that. Yeah. But then the backgrounds here are photos. <laughs> so they took, you know, give and take. <laughs> he was choosing where to put his time. Exactly. Like, <laughs> I burned myself out on this earlier today. For the afternoon, we're going to skip 
background. Yeah, <laughs> he, he gave it you to guys. Me. Go out and take some pictures off the balcony for me, real quick. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and this is great. Yeah. Oh, well, yep. Know, that's yeah. the page that that's I wanted that you to, to look at. Yeah. That was it. So the the page before, actually, if you flip back, I mm -hmm, love it where mm -hmm. you know it's all calm in that first panel, and then yeah. There's like, you know, you can see them kind of crash through that scene. I, I love that. I, I probably stared at that for an hour. Yeah, absolutely. Let me just look here real quick. It looks like, so this, this, this drawing is the exact same as the background of this drawing and this yes. was laid on top of it. Yes. Yep. Wild, wild. And then, you know, talk about squashing and stretching. This is great. Yeah, I love it. I just love that mask, too. The, I can't get over the, the mask. Yeah, it's so cool. Yeah, one of the gags, I guess, or the, the joke, the running joke about the evil eye character is that whenever, like, Gigi turns into an evil eye, um, he just automatically rips off his clothes for no reason. <laughs> So that's why, you know, if he's ever switched into that, he's almost always just naked like that with just underwear. That's hilarious. <laughs> well, you know, you, you, if you got it, flaunt it, I guess. And it turns <laughs> into that thing and probably like jacks him up a bit. <laughs> it's probably more of like, you can't tell me what to do, clothes, you know? Or <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, I just love this drawing. Yeah. I'm not a cosplayer at all, but if I if if I was a talented cosplayer and I could piece together stuff, that would be the one that I would that would be my dream cosplay is to like be Okarun when he's turbo granny mode. Like I yeah. I would probably never cosplay again. Like that's how bad <laughs> I would want to do that. Well, you'd be kicked out because he doesn't have a shirt on. <laughs> he doesn't. So. Yeah, a lot of cosplayers that, you know, have the booba, they yeah. usually get away with it by bandaging up their There you go. And just go out, <laughs> you know, with flesh color bandages over yeah. it. Yeah, that's awesome. You wouldn't take much, you know, some 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 shorts and a mask. That's really all you need. Yeah. And some round glasses. And again with this ball, you know, oh, and this like this just this punching, just there's so much great action in here. It it really is a a, a a masterclass in in movement. Yeah, I love how he's moving around like a frog and yeah, so almost like Spider-Man. That's fantastic. And then gets hit in the face here, and like the the power. I don't know if the power wanes or if the the mask is just smashed, but that's. That looks painful in this yeah. picture, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm always amazed at how his glasses, um, he, or he, they either break and he gets new glasses or they're just yeah. pristine. <laughs> yeah, they never seem to break, right? Um, it, and, and the way that the, the, the line, you know, all flows towards the direction of the, of the motion. Yeah. All, almost all times, you know, is... Yeah, I love that double hit. The ball hits him first, and then his his forearm or elbow. Yeah, um, whap. Yep, totally. Yeah, that's that's some great choreography. <clears throat> this is not. Uh, this is well thought out. And the thing is, is you know they don't have <laughs> a lot of time to think about this. You just no. have to. You you have to. I feel like if you're going to be a successful mangaka, you have to just absorb everything at a young age, you know, all, all the tricks right away, because once they say go, there's no time to think and learn. Yeah. It's go. You just got to stop thinking about it and only act. Beautiful. And then they took this, this ghost drawing and then probably used it, and turned it into a tone that they could yeah. then bend and manipulate. I'm getting, I'm, I'm learning a I lot from this. I don't mind at all when artists use shortcuts like that. No. I, I love it as long as they do it right. And I, I feel like all the shortcuts in this one, I, I've never been, you know, unimpressed by it. 
Um, I, I think people generally are moving towards the, you know, the goal of like, we just want content, <laughs> yeah. you know, like any, any way we can get it going. However you get it to us. Right. Yeah. I just hope that the quality doesn't go down because of that, you know? Yeah. I think if you use it right, the shortcuts, right. Like how they did there, I think it works out really well. Yeah. Be smart about it. Oh, you know? Be God. tasteful. Look at that. And it's such a simple move that he's doing. And it looks stupid if you see someone do it in real life. All he's doing is squatting there, right? Yeah. Um, but he just made it look so cool. <laughs> yeah. And he's going yeah. back and forth there. He's squatting forever. <laughs> yeah. God. Oh, I, I love, love that. that figure. I love that panel so bad. Yeah. That's so cool. I love the elongated thing. It reminds me of like Egon Shile or, or, and, 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 and like, and flux had a baby you know yeah and a lot you know a lot of people in asia are, are really quite thin um like i think i you've seen me in person i am yeah. definitely 2xl over there <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah a lot of people get mad about how a lot of the characters might be lean or like they're like no one's that lean and i'm like oh you haven't been there <laughs> a lot of people actually look like that so yeah it's also not, kind of not the point. It's conveying something that is not something that you see in real life every day. So yeah, guess what? People also don't get blown out of like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, well, I'm just trying to point out that like there is no, I guess, hidden agenda of trying to be right. skinny. Right. It's just, it's an accurate portrayal of like people who actually are skinny yeah. in Japan. Um, and if anything, you know, with how Okar Okarun looks, you know, it's kind of almost a power fantasy for all of those, like, skinny high school short boys, you know? Right. It's amazing. So this is, like, after the f battle, and this goo is some, some sort of, like, ectoplasm stuff. Yeah. And then, yeah, the she's, like, caught in there. Look at that. That's great. Man. Again. I mean, there's there's tones that are doing a lot of lifting here, but it's there's a lot of this is just pen work. That's so cool. But this is just way too... See, this they has to be like a model that was probably yeah. Popped they, in. Most way likely too they straight. yeah. Most likely they either traced it or I mean nowadays with the models will have like you can set it to that, but I'm sure they added some stuff to it too. Sure, but I feel like when you not just a, leave it where the model name. like kind of outlines it automatically, it ends mm -hmm. up looking kind of stiff. So you almost you got to tweak it. To, yeah, add some yeah. texture in there. Sure. Probably like uh, there probably is like I wonder if like what's the what's the program of choice over there? Is it probably Clip Studio or something? Probably, um, honestly, yeah, they're probably using Clip Studio. Yeah, Clip Studio is great. It does so many things that I can't do, and I have I, I bounce between Photoshop and Clip Studio and Procreate. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I'm not great at Procreate. <laughs> yeah, um, but I. I love that Photoshop has a better, I guess, formula for resizing. And that's the one thing that I hope Clip Studio gets better at. Because like, I feel like when you resize something, even making it smaller, it gets blurry, like unnecessarily. Yeah. Um, so for that, like, I kind of wish, you know, with all the changes that they've been making to Clip, that they're going to add that change soon. Right. I mean, yeah. They're, 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 just, they're just trying to make it better and better, more functional for everybody. I mean, yeah. eventually, I'll, hopefully, I'll be able to get rid of my Photoshop. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Oh, I love that. The earthquake. Yeah. And he did, does this great double line. It's funny because on camera, it almost looks like a ventricular yeah. image. Crazy. Yeah, it's doing something weird when I move it, too. <laughs> yeah that's nice and dude then, this episode's gonna be really long <laughs> yeah yeah it's okay 
yeah, look at that. It's this, yeah, when this worm breaks out, it's just chaos and wow, look at that. And the energy of just moving through here. They're really great at drawing debris. Yeah. I I still can't perfect it or in where I feel comfortable with it. But the explosions and you know where to place like you know certain impact yeah. kind of shots, like I still always second guess it. Yeah. Yeah, that'll come with time, I think. I'm trying to move through this as quick as possible, but I just want to linger on stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Seeing that too, man. Yeah, this is great. And then, yeah, the granny comes out. Is that the granny? Is that the granny that was in the cat? Uh, no, no. Oh, so okay. There's a lot of weird old looking people <laughs> in the series. Um, yeah, it's, it's a different granny. I think that that granny is was the head of a cult that was the one feeding. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And all the people that were sacrificed to the worm were actually alive inside of the worm, right? Yeah. Man, look at these just these explosions. You know, smoke is so hard to draw. I do it differently every single time because I'm always finding somebody who can do it better, and I try to like bite it. I still haven't settled on a way to draw. To draw smoke but everybody's there's so many <clears throat> different different ways to do it and you know a lot of like e even every every manga artist draws it differently you know every american artist draws it differently every classical illustrator draws it differently yeah oh man look at that forest yeah And yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, this fight with all these, all these cult, the cult people. people. Yeah, you got the soccer ball flying around. Yeah, <laughs> like look at how her arm is bent. <laughs> Yeah, we've basically moved into a different, like, story at this point from, yeah. like, from where we started. So Because like they're not in that. the labyrinth anymore. Yeah. But, I man, love that. Okay, that so, yeah, look at this alien. Character. Look at that. <laughs> I love that the alien is a crab. <laughs> yeah, with this, like, weird disc, disc head. The Asian in me is like, oh, I love this crab character. Now I'm hungry. Yeah, we're great. <laughs> I think that transcends because I'm hungry now too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's great. I mean, you could just look at this for days. Really, you could. Yeah. And again, like, I think I'd rather read it in this in this format than than digitally. It looks um, so much better in print. Um, that was one of the things that I kind of had to fall in love with back again, um, considering putting my stuff in print. Yeah. Uh, I I I tried to live like kind of an overly minimalist lifestyle. I think um, in the two early two thousands and up to late two thousand tens. And so I, I wanted to keep everything digital and I didn't really see, it's not that I, I wanted to downplay the importance of stuff in print, but yeah. it was more of a, for, with people seeing my stuff digitally, would it, would print even do it justice? Cause I feel like, again, I was using that standard that we're seeing here. Yeah. Um, but it turns out after, you know, half of the crown got printed, um, a lot of people who were supporting me online actually never read it digitally because they want it like this. Yeah. So. 
Interesting. Well, I mean, now I got to buy the rest of it. The yeah. Rest of it. You won't regret it. It's um it's it's one of those series that you think it can't get any more insane or it can't keep up the pace or the hype, but so far so good. It's been great. I love it. So, what are they on now? Oh gosh. <laughs> I don't know because I don't have all of them myself, but I do um, have the Shonen Jump um, subscription. Let me see yeah. what chapter they're on. Because I know that like one book has like six or seven chapters, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this one has, does it say? Yeah, this is from chapter 41 to 49. So, and then. And this is book six so come on man all right five six seven eight nine so yeah about nine nine chapters in each i would imagine i really hate the shonen jump side yeah <laughs> it's so hard to navigate like it, i just want to look because I, I have a subscription and i could look at stuff but it always gives me the link to buy the stuff anyway. And I'm like, yeah, I already yeah. bought it. It's, so right now it's on chapter 165. Oh, okay. So yeah. they're well past this. Yes. Yes, yes. Oh, wow. So probably like 15 volumes so far. Yeah. Least. Amazing. I love that it can just go on like that. We don't, we don't do that in the States anymore. Um, your book, Half the Crown, <laughs> is, is out now. Oh, my, we should have did this one first and then looked at Dun 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 after. <laughs> it, uh, it's out now at stores. You can get it uh, at your shop uh, through Cosmic Lion Productions, right, is publishing it physically. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, you can also get it at the Cosmic Lion shop. Um, and where can people find you online? So um, you can find uh, my comic, like the scroll up version of it, the webcomic version on almost all of the platforms, but it's most up to date on the Webtoon app. Um, and then you can also find me on Instagram. I feel like that's kind of the only place I, I do have like a Facebook and stuff, but that's I, I feel like that's abandoned, been abandoned for a while. Um, so I'm just mostly up to date if you want to see what I'm doing uh, on Patreon or on Instagram. Awesome. And I'm the only Rohigashi on everything, although I did take my Twitter down recently. Okay. Just no, nothing happened. I just, you know, I was it was just one more thing to keep track of and so yeah. I just decided to just make it easier for myself. Yeah, that makes sense. It's yeah. a smart move. All right. Well, thanks so much for coming on. Um and uh you know, anytime uh, you have something coming out, please feel free to come back. Sound good? Yeah. Thank you so much. I had All a great right, thanks, time. Bro. Talk to you later. Bye. Join my Patreon to see my work before anyone else. Plus, score physical sketchbooks, mini comics, and commission delivered right to your door. And read in my new books, Something Seems Off and Three Headed Pigman, as they are made. Go to my website to order original art, commissions, and my books, Lost Angels, Spectral A Showcase of Fear, Chaotic Neutral, and more. Gray Matter Drip, The Art of Chris Anderson, is available now from Cosmic Lion Productions. Here are the upcoming conventions I'll be at at the time of this recording. And don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. It helps spread the word. Thanks.